Sword of Convaria. Convalaria? What are you? Look, okay, the title, the name of the game is in the title. I've actually been having quite a lot of fun with this game. Now, I know that, in, relatively speaking, I have a later UID compared to my Hoyoverse game, so I did get a late start in this game, but I'm legitimately enjoying my time. For the record, I haven't been asleep in 24 hours. This is going to be a bit unhinged. But regardless of the circumstance, I like this game. It has the same pixel art style that something like Brown Dust 2 has, obviously without the fan service. I, I do think that the base management mechanics, or at least in this game, the decoration is nice, but I don't think it's on par with something like Arknights, for example. As weird as that sounds, it also doesn't have the same purpose as it does in Arknights or even Path Nowhere. But it's still nice here. I think that this game, it has bonds, but let's be honest here, the bond system, if you play this game, you know, isn't exactly good because it doesn't really, it doesn't match the level of Nikkei or Blue Archive or even Zenla Zone Zero. Even Aether Gaze has a better bond system than this because there's no legitimate benefit to it. I'm not necessarily talking about just attribute stats. I'm talking about more so, what do I learn about the character? Where's the stories? Now, even though I just said that, I think that the loop of this game is extremely fun. I would honestly say that if you like this, if you like this art style, or maybe you're interested in a few character designs, you should play it because legitimately speaking, you don't even need to pull in the gotcha. Yes, as of right now, there's some great characters. Gloria, you're gonna have your beginner banner. Cole, that, that is a girl. I thought it was a boy too. That is a girl. I'm equally confused, but there's Cole, there's Beryl, there is these two who I'm gonna be honest, aren't nearly as cute as the first ones I mentioned. So yeah, there's a couple banners right now and you can ignore a decent chunk of them. If you choose not to, or if you choose to summon, then yeah, ideally you can reroll for a character. You can go on the Cole Barrel banner and pick either one of these two up. They're great in my opinion. You can pick Samantha up if you really need some healing or some additional bonuses, whatever. If you want to avoid the gotcha, you can. All you're going to do is progress through Fool's Journey, which even though it presents itself in this screen here like it's the main thing, is realistically just a side story onto Spirals of Destinies, which in my opinion is the main meat of the game. Now, yes, you do have keys to enter, but you will have an abundance of these, at least early game. And this is where the vast majority of your story content comes from. This is where you meet a good chunk of the characters who you are seeing in the gacha pool. And it's great because it doesn't make you build characters in the same way that you would. You don't have to pull for characters. You're not restricted by access to the characters that you already pulled for. You're restricted by access to characters that you've recruited in that story. It's long term. You can replay it. It's great. Crossing of worlds such as your farming stages. You will unlock these gradually. And yes, there's an abyss thing in this game. It resets weekly. You can ignore it for that for, for like at least a decent chunk in my opinion because you probably won't be strong enough to really compete heavily into it or get into the part that actually resets. So take your time. What do you think? This is a fun game. Now, if I'm talking about my just blunt and straightforward issues, it actually has to do with the gacha. Because unlike a lot of other games, similar to something like Snowbreak Containment Zone, you can farm for constellations or stars in this game. This is also similar to something like Blue Archive, but I'm going to use it in Snowbreak Zone just because in my opinion, that is much more similar and constellations have a legitimate impact. Whereas in Blue Archive, if you're talking about a five star or a three star in that game, they don't really get much value from being ranked up because it's like they unlock another skill. Ignoring that. I think there are two things. First off, Inspire of the Destinies is your end game content and they don't necessarily add anything else, whether that be an extension to the Abyss type thing, the monthly, essentially weekly resetting difficult content, or they don't add something like a raid mode or anything to do with bosses. I can see characters getting into a point where once you have your main team down, whether it is something like your launch characters that you got and got for free alongside maybe one or two additional limited units that you picked up later on, or your hyper invested of four stars and three stars, which are epic and common units or rare units, I don't see a reason to pull or invest into a lot of units. Now, don't get me wrong, they will make your farming runs easier, but if you have the units you like, hypothetically, let's say Cole, Faco, Iggy, Mytha, and Beryl are my main crew, and I like all of them. And I don't like any character that comes into the future. I was faced with two issues. First off, I have no reason to pull for reruns because, well, most of them probably won't get one. And secondarily, I can just farm up these, you know, the, the star up currencies. But that's a good thing. So let's bring it on to the second issue. Why would I pull for a new unit if my current gear, if my current characters already satisfy the requirements and they are hyper invested to the extent to where if I do pull a new unit, I have to farm out their constellation, so to speak, or their additional upgrades. Now, if we're looking at the building aspect, there is some uniqueness. Fake Al, for example, here has one trinket, which these trinkets are essentially the equivalent to your artifacts or your W drives in ZZZ or whatever the case may be, your relics in HSR, you know, you get the gist. They're the substat dependent ones you are farming for and looking for the best roles on this section here because these details are your substats. Now, some of these can double up the effect. You can have a subset that just repeats this skill, essentially doubling its effectiveness. That's great. And you're only rolling for that piece. 
when you are farming out stages such as your weapon or your gear stages you're technically speaking not just farming out the currency to upgrade but also can farm out the gear itself if i'm going into the crossing of warfights and let's say hypothetically i'm looking to build up my gear radiant forging is the upgrade or weapon ascension material but if i'm looking for just gear weapon retrial would be it because weapon retrial has a chance of giving me any of these weapons and that's great because it does mean you have a chance small albeit may to get an additional copy of a weapon that's nice cool wonderful and you also have tower residual which is your artifact farming this is your memory retriever which is where you're farming out your constellations you can only do this once a day keep that in mind that's a lot i think the uniqueness from this game comes twofold first off auto battle is god awful for most characters if a singular character on your team has anything similar to an alert mode which is what fake Howl here has the game will use it every opportunity you get it won't set up alert in a path of an enemy no it will walk right up to the enemy and use the alert like the enemy has to move to hit them i don't understand it whatever the main thing here is because these are your set skills you only have five and yes you're going to be replacing your basic attack so i'm kind of that's the skill you do have two separate build paths to go down though you can go all maneuver and all hunt on character like a for example but you have to pick as you level them up maybe rank three are you going for this hunting preparation or are you going for gray wolf sleep this allows you to have a little bit of customization and yes these castals do allow you to reset and pick another skill for instance i can buy this one but that still takes up a skill slot so you are building out which ones do you use more often maybe instead of just looking at that you also gotta look at it and consider leadership skills leadership skills or leaders aura skills are extremely useful because they buff up the rest of your party depending on composition this is nice so there is some flexibility within team composition there is some flexibility within builds as to what you are doing for your individual characters and i do overall like that i do think bond stories would do a lot to interior characters but power of destinies works to a degree plot line it's a little bit confusing i think for some individuals at least early on because there is a bit of not time travel with something similar like it and it can throw you off especially when you look into the game and you're thinking power of destinies is you know your side story not the main meat of the game don't get me wrong i like it but it's still oriented in an odd way you are hard capped by your level and not hard capped in the sense of oh you can't do shit hard capped in the sense that you will just get beat by every single enemy in the game if you're too far under leveled i am level 25 26 right now the enemies i'm facing off against in chapter 3 are level 35 and they hit hard so yes there's a level difference here but i'm obviously running a team that is relatively expensive first off and second off uh, i rerolled a fair bit for coal i think that just with this game alone just for the gameplay and for the amount of things you can do with Battle of Destiny's, it's worth a shot i would not put this on par with a game like nikkei because i think nikkei has more for you to do i would not put this on par with a game like zzz because i believe zzz does relationship stories better even though i hate the way they do it here i think duar kept does it the best I don't think this is going to replace the likes of those games. But if you like Brandis 2's art style and you enjoy that combat, this has more free range combat like it in a similar style. If you want fan service, this isn't for you. It doesn't have that. I recommend it, but I recommend it at the same tier. I would recommend something like Aether Gazer or Reverse 1999. It's a fun game, but it's not a main game. It's perfectly fine for a casual side game, especially if you just want to let the game auto for you. Either way, sort of Convaria, I'm not sponsored. I kind of just heard about this and picked it up so this is off the rip but i do enjoy it there are tons of guides i recommend checking out the subreddit because that is just guide for hey who do you level and the game tosses free stuff at you constantly if we're just looking through the events tab you have an event that's giving you stuff for the game hitting 5 million downloads you have level up events you also have daily login events events for just starting the game tower of conquest which is your abyss even if you're going and ignoring that, and you're just talking about your progression, which in Genshin, this would be the Adventurer's Handbook, the game tosses a 10 pull at you alongside a free unit and a free weapon. Another free unit, who you have already gotten, so it's basically C1. Her best in style weapon, a 10 pull. Another free unit, their best in style weapon. Another free unit, which is a dupe, so it's C1. Her best in style weapon, or at least additionally a treasure that benefits her. A copy of a free unit, his best in style weapon. Another copy. A legendary weapon, this could be anything. A trinket, this could be anything. And a pick your own character. Who do you want out of the three you already have? Alongside a temple. And a bunch of trinkets. And a bunch of tarot cards. And another free temple. And a bunch of supplies. And then two weapons. You see what I'm getting at here? The game will toss quite a fair bit at you. And so in my opinion, 
just try it out. You don't really have to gotcha for a lot, but you can if you want to. If you do, go for Coco. She's cute. Go for Coco. She's a great healer. Go for Inanna if you really need a healer early on, or go for Angel. Those are your two options. Either way, I'm